We're going to be giving our NFL award predictions for this upcoming year. So that's going to cover all of the major end of season awards, which is coach of the year, comeback player of the year, defensive and offensive rookie of the year, defensive and offensive player of the year. And then lastly, we're going to be giving our MVP predictions. So let's go ahead and start off with coach of the year. Um, I'll go first this time. And I think the guy that I picked is probably the betting odds favorite, but it just, it makes the most sense. I think that they're going to win their division primarily because their division is weaker than it was last year in some respects. Um, and their team finished their season on a high. They've continued to get better year after year. So my pick for coach of the year is Dan Campbell. Um, I think he's going to have the narrative. You know, everybody he already's got the extra, you know, popularity coming out of hard knocks um, from the prior season. Um, and obviously, like I said, they had a chance to make the playoffs last year. Things didn't go their way, but they ended up spoiling Aaron Rodgers' chances to get a playoff send off for his time in Green Bay. Um, but I, I think they're genuinely going to win the AFC, the AFC, NFC North. Um, I mean, like the Packers is going to be the first Jordan Love year, so I'm not too high on expectations for team success. I think what the Vikings had last year was kind of fluky lightning in a bottle. I don't think they're going to perform to that same level. And the Bears, I think, are still a few seasons away. Like as much as I'm high on Justin Fields, like I think they still need a couple more pieces on both sides of the ball before they're, you know, real contenders, not even in the NFC, but like really to make some noise in the division. Um, so like, not even necessarily just by process of, of elimination, but I think the Lions are the best team in this division um, and will probably win and be going to the playoffs and very easily could see them having a 10 or 11 win season. Um, and I think that will probably be enough to get him um, coach of the year with the additional narrative that like he inherited one of the worst teams in the NFL and in just a few seasons has them winning the NFC North. Yeah. I like that pick just because, like you said, I, I think the narrative is completely on their side. And, like, mm -hmm. just the lines in general, like you said, coming off of hard knocks. And just last season in general, like, I was one of those people that was like, oh, I'm rooting for the Lions just because, I don't know, it was just a fun team that, like, yep. you have no – they suck for so many years. Like, you have no reason – unless you're in that division, obviously. You have no reason to hate the Lions. So, it was kind of everyone's, you know, like, uh, like favorite team, like, low-key favorite team. So, then coming into this year, like you said – they're now in a better position. They're in a really good position to win the division. Yeah, they they got he has the whole narrative on his side. So I could definitely mm -hmm. see that. Um, my pick for coach of the year is actually Doug Peterson. Um, I think that I, I think that Jacksonville is going to win a lot of games. Like I think they're going to be I, I, I wouldn't predict them to be the number one seed, but I just think their schedule. Their division, like they're gonna win a lot of games. I can see them winning like twelve games. Like I see mm -hmm. them winning that many games because all right, you have a solid defense. I'm not gonna say the defense is great, but the defense is solid. Mm -hmm. You have second year with the with uh with Trevor Lawrence in this system. <clears throat> Excuse me, in this system with all these weapons around him, and then adding adding Calvin Ridley, which I think is gonna be really really huge because that gives yep. them a solidified number one receiving option. I like Christian Kirk, but I don't think he's a solidified number one. So when you give um, a guy as talented as Calvin Ridley to Trevor Lawrence, I just think that that's only going to make the offense even better. Mm -hmm. um, ET, you have Etienne in the backfield. I really like Tank Bigsby as well. Like I think he's a, like that one-two combination between him and Etienne. That's a really good backfield right there. And then you still have Jermichael Hasty, who's a solid like third down back. So just in general, between the upgrades they made this offseason, excuse me, you have year three for Trevor Lawrence, which I'll talk more about him a little bit later in a couple of these awards, but I think he's going to have an insane type of year. Mm -hmm. And I think the division is weak. Like, they can easily run away with this division. If like, they don't go five and one in the division, I think they've, like, failed. You know what I mean? Like, right. they, they – and the only loss I would really be, like, understanding of is, like, okay, you split with the Titans because – Mike Vrabel defenses are always going to come to play. And like always Titans Jags is always a hard fought game, but like there is no excuse for y'all to lose home or away to the Texans or the Colts. That's what I'm saying. Like they it's just so easy that I think they're going to win enough games. I think they are going to challenge for that one seed. I'm not going to say they're going to win it, but I think they can challenge for that one seed. And just all of those games alone, I think that, that Doug Peterson, Doug Peterson has a good chance because 
just looking at their schedule, they have like just hard games on their schedule. Kansas City, Buffalo. I'm a Steelers fan. I'm a little biased, but I'm not even going to include them. San Fran, maybe one of these Tennessee games, like you said, in Cincinnati, in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. That's it. I think they can win a couple of those games. But even if they don't, like the rest of these games are like they should be favors to win those games. So I think they're they're I think Jacksonville's in for a really big season. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I'm really, really high on Calvin Ridley and Trevor Lawrence as like a QB wide receiver duo that's gonna break out this Me year. Too. Um mm-hmm. so and I think like you said, it fits very perfectly because it moves Christian Kirk back into number two role, which is where he kind of excelled to begin with when he was in Arizona. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that makes a ton of sense. That makes a ton of sense. Um, next up, we have Comeback Player of the Year Award. Uh, the odds-on favorite right now for Comeback Player of the Year is DeMar Hamlin for very obvious reasons. Um, I think, like, he – I'm thinking solely based on somebody that I've either had like a really catastrophic injury or just, you know, missed a lot of time with injuries or really played horribly and like really elevated their level of play. So him coming back, if he is not like, you know, having like a hundred tackle season or gets a couple of picks, like really elevates his stats. Like if he comes back and plays the same way, that's still a fantastic story. Like that doesn't, make him a comeback player in terms of how I'm viewing the award. Right. Um, and like I said, look, it's a phenomenal story, just the fact that he's back playing anyway. So, like, that aside, my pick for comeback player of the year, and I know I'm going to have to defend it a little bit, is Russell Wilson. And Boo. <laughs> <laughs> it is – I'm not going to lie – it is almost solely because I genuinely am refusing to believe that Russell Wilson can play that bad two years in a row. Like, there's there's just no way, bro. There's no way that he can do <laughs> this. Like, maybe he just sucks. Like, you never know. He could just row. stink. I, I'm, I'm really – that is – I don't have much more outside of that. Like, they kind of have gotten hit with the, the injury bug in camp. Obviously, Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, I think, has a hamstring injury. Um, and Javante Williams is coming off of the ACL injury, but he's been looking good in preseason, which is, I mean, obviously a great sign. And he came back, I think, in like 10 months from the injury, which is insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think, look, Nathaniel Hackett clearly was not ready for – what he got himself into as a head coach in Denver last year. You bring in somebody like Sean Payton, who's been there, done that at a high level for a very long time. You can already, I mean, he's already come in and been like, look, there's stuff that happened here last season that are just, it's just not going to fly on my watch. And so, look, I don't know if it was like a comfortability thing, whatever happened that Russ kind of just got complacent and then the play really. Hank fell off a cliff last year. Um, there's there's no way. I, I just feel like there cannot be any way they are that bad. So even if they are just competitive in their division, like I feel like he has a good case to win the award because he gen like they were four and eleven last year. He only threw for 3,500 yards and had a threw 16 touchdowns and 11 picks. Like it don't get much worse than that for somebody at that level. So, like, even if he just has a above average season, I think he very well could win this award. And that's minimally what I'm expecting from him. If not, I will come up here and let y'all know that Russell Wilson is officially washed. I get your your argument of just the fact that he cannot play as bad as he did last year, which I think is true, bro. There was a point in time – that a guy had a TikTok series and it was can Russell Wilson throw as many touchdowns as he has bathrooms in his house? <laughs> or I got to like week 16. Yeah. <laughs> he got way too far into the season before he finally passed up that number of bathrooms. So I, I do agree. I don't think he's going to play as bad as he did last year. But with that being said, 
he was arguably the worst quarterback in the league last year. So it's like, and I don't think it's that right. hard to not play that bad. <laughs> he just got to get – like, bro, he, this is – the that was the least amount of TDs he's ever thrown in his career. Like, oh, yeah. in the, the, his next next closest, I think, was, was 2014. He threw 20 touchdowns and seven picks and made the Pro Bowl that year. So it's like, this is like – as bottom of the barrel as we've ever seen him. And I just, he's, even like I said, if you just, this stats from the season before, through 3,100 yards, 25 touchdowns, six picks. If he puts up roughly around that range, I think he could easily win comeback player of the year. That's where I just disagree because I don't think he could do that. I think he's cooked. I you, think he Russell's can't, done. 3K, 25, and six. That is think, like mundane, bro. No Tim Patrick, no KJ Hamler. Jerry Judy just got hurt as well. I just think he's like if they if the if they're a better team, I think it's be just gonna be because they're gonna run the ball. Like they're just gonna run, 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 run the ball. He's gonna be somewhat of a game manager. Even then, even if he has like a, a like a solid season, I don't think it's gonna be enough to give him to get him this award. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it'll be a good comeback player, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough to get him an award. I could be a little salty because he absolutely sold me in fantasy last year. So. <laughs> he, he, like, he, he, oh, uh, God. He who do you out. have as comeback player of the year? My comeback player of the year goes into my coach of the year. My comeback player of the year is Calvin Ridley. I think that <laughs> uh, a whole year off for a suspension. Um, and even before that, the year before he had the – he wasn't really playing too great. And then I think he took that time off. Like He was done for the rest of the season because he had like, mm-hmm. like mental health stuff going on. Yeah. And, like, we talked about it before, so I'm not going to go too crazy into it. This, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be a really good team. I think that Trevor Lawrence is going to break out. And if he's going to break out, his number one option is going to, like, reap a lot of that. And I think that Calvin really, someone who's already shown he's capable of being a number one, putting up crazy, crazy numbers, I think he's going to do that again. So I have Calvin really. I think he's going to become back player of the year. And then, honestly, another one I slid in there, I put in Lamar Jackson. Because Lamar Jackson has been mm-hmm. hurt the past couple of years. He was hurt last year, missed the end of the season. And I think that with his change of OC with more weapons, like he's going to put up crazy, crazy numbers. And I think that he definitely is going to have a case for uh, for comeback player of the year. So May- Calvin really won, and I put Lamar Jackson like 1B kind of. I didn't even think about Calvin Ridley, but I mean, that does qualify. Bro, didn't mess the entire last season. Yeah. He wasn't hurt or anything, just got suspended. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Which is kind of wild. He got suspended for the whole season because of gamble. That's a whole season is wild. Right, whole season, but Deshaun got twelve. We ain't even gonna get into that. You're right, that, yeah. <laughs> that's disgusting. Man. Um, okay, let's go on to defensive rookie of the year. I have two guys here. One of them is a little bit higher up on the betting odds. Uh, the other guy is kind of a dark horse pick, but makes a lot of sense to me. So the first guy I have here, I think it's top three or five in the betting odds, is Jalen Carter. I don't even know if I need to say much. He, again, had number one overall prospect grades. And obviously because of the incidents that transpired after the national championship game, there were some character issues that came up. Whatever the case may be, he slid all the way to whatever it was, nine or ten. Nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he's on an Eagles team that is possibly hungrier than last year because they've now been there and know what it's like to lose in the Super Bowl. So that is probably fueling their fire. And additionally, like we mentioned when we did the NFC East preview, he's going to get to be in a very healthy D-line rotation. And even just from a, um, you know, a, a interior D tackle perspective, he has Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox. And so it's like, He's never going to have to get gassed or drive. Like he's always going to be able to rotate and be fresh. And in those reps, really be able to give that 100, 110%. And if he's giving you that consistently, there are not many centers or guards in the NFL right now who can block him point blank. He is a menace. He's a monster. He was very likely going to be the number one pick for a reason. So because of that, he is my main guy for defensive rookie of the year. But you'll like my dark horse because my dark horse is Joey Porter. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And this is my, my logic. A, we talked about it. The Steelers' defense is very good. Um, you have T.J. Watt still. You have Minka still. They brought in Patrick Peterson, who's going to kind of be there to help mentor him. Um, 
And, you know, he's going into a place where obviously his dad plays a lot of, you know, a little bit of a narrative there additionally as well. But um, I could see, you know, the defense is playing really good. People are getting pressures. You've got Minka over the top to kind of help you. You can play a little bit more aggressive that way. You know, who knows? He comes away with a couple of interceptions here or there. You know, we saw him getting really competitive in those one-on-ones with George Pickens in some of the videos that came out from training camp. Um, they're going to continue to make the both of them better each and every day throughout practice, so they'll get better as the year goes on. Um, so, yeah, a couple things go his way. The team plays well. The, the Overall, the defense is playing well. He has some good pass breakups, has a couple of interceptions. Like, that, I think will at least toss him into the conversation for defensive rookie of the year so. Joey Porter is, is my dark horse for that award. Okay, I like that. I like I like that. I like the logic behind it too. I it, it definitely I can see that happening, you know, the pressure from TJ Watt, Minka over the top. I like that pick a lot. I do. Um my defensive rookie of the year, I'm just be boring. I'm just, I pick Will Anderson. Um I just think honestly at the end of the day, what really gets you what really gets you an award like this is sacks. Right, like he's yeah. gonna get to the quarterback. He's gonna get sacks. It's that mm-hmm. plain and simple. It was really between him and Chris, and I was like Chris Carter and Jalen Carter. Mm-hmm. Um, I just told Will Anderson just because I think that like Jalen Carter is gonna have a great year. Like you say, he's gonna stay fresh. That role, that D line is gonna constantly be rotating, so it's gonna be like he's gonna be fresh at all times. So he's gonna have a good rookie season. I just think that I don't know how much um how much the voters would take into account like. Is it just him or, like, is that D-line all stacked? They got to worry about this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah. Like, it has nothing to do with Jalen Carter as a player at all. So, I just think Will Anderson being there, being that guy, playing with, playing under D'Amico Ryans, I think that he's going to have a really good season. He's going to get after. He's going to get to the quarterback. And he's going to be the show on that defense, basically. Um, him and Derek Stingley Jr. Jr. are the pretty much the only two guys with, like, a kind of somewhat of a bigger name on that defense. Um, so I think that him like that, along with the fact that he's going to have really good stats his rookie year, I think he's going to win a defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, that makes sense. And look, you don't got to say it's boring because sometimes you don't have to overthink some of these awards because I did not overthink offensive rookie of the year because my pick is B. John Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, all I got to say is Tyler Algier had a thousand yard rushing season with the Falcons last year. This man, Bijan, is about to go crazy, bro. He's about to go insane. He's being drafted top 10 in normal fantasy drafts for a reason. The expectations on him are to have very high production immediately as a rookie, um, which, you know, he's he lived up to at his time at Texas. That's why he got picked so high. Um, so look, I'm not going to overthink it. I think all of the, the QBs have tough positions in terms of their, their circumstances. Um, like uh, offensive lines aren't great really for any of them. Um, you know, Texans are lacking weapons. Um, so like there's, there's a lot that goes into it and I just don't think any of them are going to have fantastic rookie seasons. Um, and I'm expecting that out of Bijan. So I know he's the odds on favorite, but I, like it's for a reason. I think he really is going to win the award. Listen, all you got to say is, bro, he got drafted to the Falcons, who have a really good run, running, run blocking offensive line, and they run the ball the most in the NFL. He's going to go stupid. Like, it's just, just mm-hmm. like you said, don't overthink it. He's going to go stupid. I also have Bijan because, for the same reasons you just said. So I actually did want to ask you a question. If, if you had to pick one between the top three quarterbacks, who do you think has the best chance to win offensive rookie of the year? Um, I, got, I got my guy who I think has the best chance. I would say AR. I think Anthony Richardson has the best chance because of the his dual threat ability. Um, like <clears throat> it definitely is gonna hurt them not having Jonathan Taylor, which I mean I guess we'll find out in a day or if that's gonna happen or not, because they gave mm-hmm. him until Tuesday for to find a trade. But um if it's trending that way, like he's not gonna have Jonathan Taylor, that's gonna hurt definitely that you know, the security blanket of having a consistent run game would help. But what that also does is put him in an uncomfortable position where he's probably going to have to use his legs a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has the the athletics. We saw what he did at the combine um, to, you know, at least make something out of nothing with his legs. Um, he still has, you know, Michael Pittman and a couple other good receivers there. 
um, in Indianapolis. So I, I think that alone um, is why if I had to pick one of the three of them, I would pick Anthony Richardson. That makes sense. I like that a lot. I, I picked Bryce Young. The only reason why I picked Bryce, because like you said, I think Anthony Richardson's situation is a little bit better for him to mm-hmm. produce. But just watching Bryce Young actually through college and through the po- in through the preseason, uh, he just looks the most NFL ready to me. Like even in the preseason games where he has pressure in his face, he is calm. He knows he's going to get hit. He's still going to step up. He's still going to make the throw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see him make good throws. I see him be accurate. I've seen him. Um, I've seen him literally with the rushes coming. I see him evade the rush, make plays on the run. Like he he looked really really good just as far as what I'm seeing eye test wise him on the mm-hmm. field. So I just think he's the most pro ready. So if I had to pick one, I'd pick him. But I think both of those guys are gonna be are gonna be contending for this award just for the fact that like you said, Anthony Richardson is probably gonna run a lot this year, especially if they don't have Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, he's it's just. He's literally gonna have to backpack that offense, mm-hmm. and he has um, better weapons too. Like, like you say, he has Pittman, he has Alec, Bur- Alec Pierce. Um, mm-hmm. He has a little bit better weapons. Yeah, I think he honestly, especially if they would have kept Jonathan Taylor, he would have, I think, been far and away in the best position in terms of for circumstances sure. for all of those quarterbacks. Like that O line for Carolina is bad. Like the Jets ate them alive in that preseason game. They're supposed um, to be good or like decent too. I don't know what's going on. Like they they don't look it at all, but like they're supposed to be at least a good run blocking O line. I don't know about pass protection. Granted, the Jets D line is is maybe one of the best in the NFL, but look, they were getting mopped <laughs> in that game, that, that Carolina O line. Um, and then just the Texans don't they have a lack of weapons. I honestly think CJ Stroud's go-to target this year is going to be Dolan Schultz, which is maybe a good thing, like have a nice, you know, QB to tight end connection so you can get simple passes, get into a rhythm. Um, I think all three of them can have very, very good and long careers in the NFL um, and have all shown flashes in the preseason as to why they all were selected as high as they were. Mm-hmm. Um, They're so all starting week one, too. All right. And I think, look, that's the way to go. Like none of these teams are competing for anything. Like, and I think a lot of teams just saw what happened with Trey Lance um, (laughs) and are like, look, just, just put them out there, just put them out there. So we know what we got. So you don't run into a situation where the whole locker room is now behind the last pick in the draft and you traded three first round picks for a guy. And he's now a Dallas Cowboy for a fourth round pick. That's crazy. That is insane. Shout out Will Greer, though. I was in the building for that game, and knowing that he basically was playing for his NFL life, his NFL career, had two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, I think almost 300 yards passing, and he dying up the Raiders secondary. I'm seeing him mobile on his feet like I've never seen Will Greer before. Um, so, so shout out to him. I hope he gets picked up because he deserves it after, after that performance. He's playing for a check, man. That dudes things too. Back against right. the wall. He out there looking like Pat Mahomes. And I know, I know the people on the field. I mean, obviously the whole stadium knew, which is like, I felt like they were cheering louder than they typically would for a third string quarterback because of that. Cause they know like, this is his literal opportunity to showcase whether he might be in the NFL or not this year. And he really made the most of it. And it felt like people on the team were stepping up to the occasion. Um, one of the running backs name is slipping right now out of my mind, but he wore like number 42 or 43 bro took like a five yard out route, broke like three tackles and turned it into a touchdown. Like people just were going above and beyond to make sure that he's getting, uh, getting his stats up. So respect to him. He, he definitely got it done in his opportunity. Um, speaking of the Cowboys, Moving on to defensive player of the year, I'm not going to bury the lead at all. I have Micah Parsons, who is going to be up in conversation for the award every year, probably as long as he stays healthy. Like you said, all of those defensive awards are a lot of them are predicated. You either have to have an absurd number of picks, like you need to be borderline, like on pace to set records with Mm -hmm. the amount of picks you have. Or it's just going to go to the person that has the most um, sacks that year. Mm -hmm. Um, And like we already said, like this 
um, Cowboys unit is going to be a top defense in the NFL, have the potential to be the best defense in the NFL. He came second in defensive player of the year voting both seasons that he's been in the NFL, which is crazy. Um, he even I didn't even know that. He finished top eight in MVP voting last year, um, which is wild. Um, but look, all he's got to do is get that sack number up to – whatever, like 16, 17, they're pretty much, I think they came out like they're dedicating him full time to playing edge rush. So they're not going to do any of that hybrid stuff, which, like I said, I think I wish was the case that he still could do that. Cause obviously he's is as good of an athlete, but in the NFL, if you're able to have an elite elite pass rusher on the field, you want that at all times. So I understand the decision. And so with him moving to that full time, I could easily see him, 18, 19, maybe a 20 sack season um, because he really is that good, that fast, that hard to block. So Micah is my pick for defensive player of the year. Yeah, he's uh, he's the obvious pick, man. He has the talent and he also has the narrative and he's playing for the Cowboys. So like he has all that working. What you trying to say? I'm just listen. It's like the Lakers <laughs> thing, bro. Like you know, what I'm saying they might get a little bit of a booze. Nah, you're, right, you're right. You're right. Not even that. Yeah, like not even as a bad thing. Like he's he plays for the Cowboys. They get the most attention on anyone in the league. And for this defense, for him, rightfully so. Yeah, he, he like he absolutely deserves it. So, and and it, I feel like defensive player of the years. Um, like those top 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 guys, you're bound to get one. Especially because, like you said, you're a pass rusher. Like pretty much mostly everyone in the league who's at the top has one i'd say besides maybe chris jones he doesn't have one um like nick bosa just got his aaron donald obviously got his tj watt got his like you know what i'm saying when you're at the top of the top maybe miles garrett i think he's probably due for one one of these years as well but when you're at mm-hmm. the top of the top like it's only it's only a matter of time till you get one um, so my pick is Michael Parsons. I'm not going to talk too much into it because you pretty much covered everything. What I will say, though, I do not want people to forget, and this is not just because I'm a Lakers fan, T.J. Watt is that guy, and T.J. Watt should have broke the sack record. If he yeah. didn't miss those games, and if they counted that last sack on that, at the, I don't know if it was Lamar playing or his backup, that was a sack. I don't, like, they just completely ruined it. But he tied the sack record. T.J. Watt is back. The Steelers' defense will be good. Mm-hmm. He will be in this conversation again, but I will pick Michael Parsons just because I feel like he, he's going to have a crazy year too. And I think, I think he deserves one at this point. Like he came in and changed the whole Dallas defense around. He deserves one. Yeah. Yeah. I think bro, making <laughs> all pro first team and coming second in defensive player of the year as a rookie, like, on in that year, like he got moved to the end, like <laughs> in training camp, like part of that yeah. season. Like, I think somebody got hurt, right? And he just like had slid there. Bro was learning on the fly and came second in defensive player of the year voting. Like he he's gonna get one, and I think this is gonna mm-hmm. be the year. Did you hear um, how he's talking in uh like I watched the um uh Ryan Clark uh I'm oh the pivot, the pivot, the pivot, the yeah, pivot, yeah, yeah, how he was in that pocket. He sounds locked in. Good. He sounds like he's not playing, bro. Like he, he's be. coming different this year for sure. We need to be. Um, I'm actually gonna ask you to go first on offensive player of the year because okay. I'm in, I need to hear yours before, before I say mine. <laughs> okay. I have one main one and I have another one who is a not a dark horse, but it's like it's predicting a breakout. Yeah. Um, excuse me. My main one is Jamar Chase. Okay. Um, I just think that, and this is <clears throat> if Burrow is healthy, like he doesn't miss like six games at a regular season or something crazy mm-hmm. like that. Even if he misses one or two, like that's fine. That, that's nothing. But I just think that if you just look at the way it's been going for him, it's like it was Jettas came in and was like the best rookie receiver ever or something. And then Jamar Chase came in the very next year and then broke that record. And it's like, Bro, Jamar Chase, he put up 1,400 yards his rookie year. Last year, he missed, I think, five games, still put up 1,100 yards, something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. And the difference in just, like, if you looked at how they were targeting Jamar Chase, like, he was getting 10, 12, 13. Like, he was getting targeted, like, versus the rookie year. It was mainly 
big play, big pay, big play, big play. And I think that's because obviously he's just getting better as a football player. So Joe Burrow is knowing like, all right, this is my guy. I know I have T Higgins and Tyler Boyd, but Jamar Chase is my number one over here. So mm-hmm. I think he's going to put up insane numbers this year playing a full season. Um, he's going to have the targets. He has one of the best quarterbacks in the league. It's a really good team. Like, I just think the numbers are going to be insane. Like, I think he definitely has a case for offensive rookie, offensive player of the year. And then my second guy predicting a little bit of a breakout, I got Garrett Wilson. That is my pick for offensive player of the year. <laughs> I hear yeah, listen, man. All right, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead then. So that's your pick. I, I typed it in and I put Dark Horse next to it. And the more I'm sitting but here is it thinking though? about it, the more I'm sitting here and thinking about it, bro, I'm, 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 I fully have convinced myself, bro. This man had 1,100 yards with Zach Wilson. What he about to put up with Aaron Rodgers? He about to go stupid, bro. I'm telling you, I need. So I need him in one of my fantasy leagues, bro. I need him. I need him, bro. So, oh my god. Yeah. Look, we know what Aaron Rodgers, how he likes to play. If he don't like you, he's not throwing you the football. Mm-hmm. Under any means, he he'll throw it away. He'll throw it in the double coverage before he throws it to somebody he doesn't trust. Obviously, that guy for him for the most recent stretches of his career has been Devonte Adams. The last two years that he was in Green Bay, he was All Pro, first team, thirteen hundred yards, fifteen hundred yards, eighteen touchdowns in twenty twenty, eleven in twenty twenty one, and that was when uh, you know Packers offense was a little bit down at last year. Um, but I think, I mean, we already talked about this Jets team. I think we both think they're going to clear in the AFC East. I think they're legitimately going to be contenders in the AFC. And, like, is it crazy to think, like, Garrett Wilson could have, like, 17, 1,800 yards? He's going to get 12 touchdowns, like, and if they're winning games – I'm 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 all in. I, like I literally uh, let me pull the list back up because as I was looking at the offensive player of the year odds, um, I just was like crossing people off down the list, and then I got to Garrett Wilson super far down. I was like, I mean, this may be kind of crazy, but like when I look at Jamar Chase, my only concern there is like Joe Burrow's injury. So that's like the first five, six games of the season that he's not going to be there. That's going to hurt his stats as a whole and potentially the Bengals season as a whole. Justin Jefferson, I don't think he's going to go back to back. I think the Vikings are going to regress. McCaffrey, uh, I don't know. Potentially, yeah. Same thing him and Nick Chubb. Like health is going to have to play a big factor into that. And like it's just going to be tough. They're both getting up there in age in terms of running backs, which is when you start to see injuries pile on. Uh, Justin Fields is an interesting one. I don't know. Like, I feel like it'd be, I don't, there hasn't been that many seasons as of late where QB has won offensive player of the year and a QB has won MVP. And you know, they try to, they try to give it to somebody that's not a QB because they know MVP is a quarterback award. (laughs) Right. So then you have Reek and Lamar and Joe Burrow. And I just was like looking at these and I'm like, yeah, yeah. But I really think Garrett Wilson can have like 1,800 yards. And if he puts up that kind of production, bro, he's he, he got to win. And he minimum has to be in the conversation. And that would be a crazy breakout for year two. Um, but I think Garrett Wilson would be my pick for offensive play of the year. It's a little, a little spicy, but, yeah, I, I really think he's about to go crazy with Aaron Rodgers. And, like, the throw – that they had in the Giants game where he literally just caught the snap and threw the fade ball before anybody is turning was, around. It was gross, bro. The late hands. And that's probably what my favorite thing to see a receiver do is, like, the late hands. Like, it's not coming. It's not coming. Very last second. Like, right. that is so clean, bro. And it's like, in that showed, like you said, like, he has that trust in him already. That yeah. drive, I think he threw to him, like, four times. Yeah. Like, you got you got to trust it, bro. He threw the ball before anybody. No one was looking. Nobody. No corners. No safeties. Not even Garrett Wilson looked like everybody is just running the fade route. Mm-hmm. He just threw it where he thought Garrett Wilson would be, and bro, just yep, like you said, and snagged it. Yeah, he, even the way he talks about him, he's like in hard knocks talking about yeah, he's special, right. like, he's different. Like he's going to get absolutely peppered with targets. He's a talented player to himself. Like, it's not just like, oh, he's the only guy there. Like, he's 
legitimately a really good like superstar caliber receiver. Um, so yeah, I I don't think that pick is a dark horse pick. I just think I mean it's predicting a breakout, but I think yeah. you could definitely see that breakout. Okay, look, eleven hundred yards with with Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson, and Chris Strebler as your right. quarterbacks, and then you just next season it's Aaron Rodgers. And you yeah. like, and that was your rookie year, right? Like, your yeah. Second year receivers go stupid, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. Um, I'm gonna give my MVP pick, and it's somebody that you mentioned could win comeback player. I'm thinking bigger. I'm thinking bigger than comeback. I'm thinking Lamar Jackson is going to win the MVP award. We talked okay. about it on the preview show. Okay. What our expectations are for the Ravens that they've had the, you know, the regular season record in the past to be regarded among the, the top contenders in the AFC. They don't have the playoff success right now, which is why they kind of stay out of that conversation when that gets brought up. Even right now, it feels like a lot of it is focused on the people where it should be right. Like the chiefs, been there, done that. The Bills giving the Chiefs a run for their money every time. The Bengals, because they've been there, done that. The Jets, because of their roster, and then now they have a quarterback who was their literal only deficiency last year, mm. um, who was a former Super Bowl winning champion. And it feels like the Ravens do not get put into that conversation enough. This is the best receiving core that Lamar Jackson, I think, has ever had since he's been in the NFL I think he's going to rack up his second MVP award and really just, again, turn the NFL into the playground all over again. Just going to give him so much more freedom to be able to throw now to someone that's not named Mark Andrews. Uh, Hopefully J.K. Dobbins is back and healthy, and that additional threat of the pass is going to open up the run game for them, and it's just going to get so dynamic for them. Um, I already said that I think they're going to win the division. Um, so they'll be a high seed in the AFC. Like every, they're ch- he's checking all the boxes for what you need to be an MVP candidate. Um, and I think he's really going to have that kind of season again. So on top of the fact that also I think there's only ever been four people to ever go back to back as MVP. So like as good of a season as Pat Mahomes is going to come, statistically it's hard to have voters do back to back awards. Obviously, I think Rodgers was the last one to do it a couple of years ago, but mm-hmm. I think there's only ever been four or five guys ever in the history of the NFL that went back to back. So I'm banking partially on that not happening because I very well could see Mahomes doing it. But I'm gonna go with Lamar and really go all in on this this Raven season being what it's hyped up to be. Listen, man, the Steelers fan in me hopes that's completely wrong, but the football fan and the Lamar Jackson fan in me is fully with you. I think he definitely could have an MVP caliber season for sure. Um, <clears throat> now, my pick, I got a main guy and I got a backup guy who's a little bit more of a – kind of like how we was talking about Garrett Wilson in the offensive of rookie year, a little bit predicting the breakout. My main guy is Justin Herbert. Now, I think that – let me just – right, I'll pull this up right here. This is Dak Prescott with Kellen Moore. Not this last season. He was hurt, missed a bunch of games, mm-hmm. had the injury, whatever, whatever. He put up 4,400 yards, 37 touchdowns, 10 picks. Mm. Talk about two years before that. He put up 4,900 yards, 30 touchdowns, 11 picks. Dak was so different in those seasons, bro. He was. Justin Herbert has never thrown for under 4,300 yards. His rookie year, he threw for, threw for 43. The next year he threw for next year he threw for five thousand off straight check downs and Mike Williams jump balls <laughs> five thousand and thirty eight touchdowns in his last year. Honestly, yards wise didn't have a down year. It was really the touchdowns because all his receivers was hurt. Mm-hmm. He had forty seven hundred twenty five touchdowns, which sounds bad, but it's only because Justin Herbert his whole career has just been so good, especially yeah. so <clears throat> excuse me so early in his career. You give him Kellen Moore, who I know you have your, you know, your love hate with him, but just the fact that it's the- gonna work perfectly because my concern was that he did not run the ball enough. <laughs> Let Justin Herbert go ahead yeah. and throw it fifty times a game. He's just his second best arm talent in the league to me. That's what I'm saying. So it's like you're gonna throw the ball all over the field, and it's like that. Finally, finally, I'm gonna stop watching Justin Herbert throw curl flats and swing passes and screens. Like, you're wasting his arm talent. Like, 
And it was pissing me off because they were winning games. So it's like you yeah. can't really tell them to switch it up. And the receivers are hurt. So you can't really tell them to switch it up that much. But you got Keenan Allen back. You got Mike Williams on the outside. You drafted Quentin Johnson, who's a little bit of an insurance as far as like Keenan Allen being a little bit older, Mike Williams mm-hmm. being a little bit injury prone. You still got um, Joshua Palmer, who I think is a, a good receiver, but him mm-hmm. being thrust into that wide receiver one, wide receiver two, that's not who he is. Right. You still got Austin Eckler in the backfield, great receiving back. Um, and I just think, bro, the offense is going to be – it's going to open up completely. They already talked about this whole training camp, like what's the difference in the offense? It's – deep shots like they're like Keaton Allen said like I was used as a slot guy like like short routes that's it he's running deep routes like they're using him all over the field I think the offense is going to completely open up and if like let's say on average what 4,530 touchdowns was his baseline already and you're opening up even more like he's the numbers are going to be crazy bro the numbers are going to be what is the most yards in a single season I don't even know let me see. But he, I, I think he break it. Whatever it is, like he, he has a chance to break that. No way Peyton Manning beat out Drew Brees by one yard. 54-77. Drew Brees got 54-76. 54 is cr- – was that the Denver year? <laughs> yes. No, nah, that – the Denver year, though, he was – bro, they were airing it out crazy. I remember that with the, with Demarius Thomas, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nah, they was going crazy, but not – all right, maybe he not going to throw – I mean, well, I look, that. that Justin Herbert season you're talking about is 15th on this list, and it's only 400 yards behind. I mean, yeah, if they throw – listen, if they throw the ball enough, which I think they will, if they do all these deep passes, which he's capable of doing, like you're finally going to allow him to throw the ball deep in – not only the fact that um it was the coaches not letting him do it, he was hurt last year too. He hurt his ribs, I think in what week but two. But even or three. in that game, I like this play stands out to me so much because mm-hmm. that was it was against the Chiefs, right? Chiefs. They were playing. Yep. I know exactly. Bro, when his about. ribs was hurt and he threw the seam ball so perfectly over On the linebacker rope. head, and he uh, grabbing at his ribs just through a dot, bro. Listen. P- just people hate Justin Herbert fans sometimes because they think like, oh, yeah, I swear he does nothing wrong. Like it can never be his fault. I'm sorry, I'm one of those guys, bro. It really don't be his fault, bro. He, if you watch this guy play, he's so good, bro. Like he's such a good quarterback. That arm talent is insane, bro, and it's insane. And I think that this year for the Chargers, I think they're gonna win a lot of games. I think they're going to be really competitive. I think that they'll finally beat Kansas City one of these games. I think they'll get one because I feel like Kansas City sweeps everybody in their division all the time. Yeah. But I, I think they're going to win one of those games. Um, I actually don't have their record pulled up. I don't know how strong of a schedule they have. Let me try to pull it up real quick. Um, I mean, obviously, they play Kansas City twice. They got San Fran. Oh, no, that's preseason. My bad. They got Miami. Actually, first game of the season. I think they're going to win that game. They got Dallas. They got the Jets, Detroit, Baltimore. So their schedule, oh Denver. Their schedule isn't terrible. It's like an mm-hmm. average strength of strength of schedule, in my opinion. But yeah. I think he's good enough. I think that the team is good enough. They're going to win a lot of games. I, bro, I just think his stats are going to be insane by the end of the season. I think it's going to be ridiculous. So he he was my number one, and then my my. My kind of uh, breakout guy is Trevor Lawrence. I feel like I've been on the Jags crazy this whole crazy thing. Crazy if he won an MVP award. I just think that he's talented enough. Like he's mm-hmm. good enough as far as talent wise. You're going into your third year, second year in the system, like we talked about. And the same thing. Like they're just gonna win so many games. And what have we seen each of these past couple years with elite young quarterbacks getting their their guy at receiver? Josh Allen gets Stephon Diggs. He turns into Thanos. Right. Then, then we got Jalen Hurts gets AJ Brown. He turns immediately into, go to the Super Bowl. Like, bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, you get these young elite quarterbacks, their guy. And that's also why I feel like both of us are kind of in on fields this year, too, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Bro, you give them their guy, they're gonna do well, bro. They're gonna at least improve and take a little bit of a leap. So I think Trevor Lawrence, along with the fact that their schedule is super easy, I think that he, they can win a lot of games that he's gonna be in that conversation for sure. Okay. Look, and look, hey, Trevor Lawrence, we saw what he did against your boy, <laughs> against yes. the Chargers in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, he got that dog in him for that game alone because mm-hmm. a lot of people would have packed it in. 
bro, four picks? Like, come on, bro. That it takes a lot of mental toughness to not lose it there, bro. It takes a lot mm -hmm. of mental toughness.